Today we're talking about Ohm's law, which states that the current through a device is the voltage across it over its impedance. For passive components like resistors, capacitors, inductors, we say that for current entering the device, it produces a voltage drop down it. So let's see for AC circuits where we treat voltages and currents as phasors, which have an amplitude and a phase. Notice that we don't really care about the frequency uh, when writing the phasors because we assume all frequencies in the circuit are constant. So if we have a voltage of some amplitude that's a sinusoid with some frequency and a phase, we can simplify that to just an amplitude and a phase. Now typically we use for our voltage sources in a circuit a zero phase reference, but really we can choose any arbitrary angle. So if this Z was purely resistive, we see that the voltage and the current are in phase. That corresponds to a situation like this, where here we have our voltage ve phasor vector with amplitude length of this arrow, current as an amplitude of this length, and we see that they are both in phase, the peaks line up perfectly. Here, how we defined our zero time axis, that corresponds to this shift. If we were to start our time zero axis here, then both of these phasors would line here. But it doesn't really matter, it's just however you want to start out your, your phasors. Now, say we observe a relationship like this, where the voltage peak occurs before the current peak. That means that uh, the voltage leads the current. So at time zero, we have a current peak, and then at time negative something, we have this voltage peak. So the voltage appears before the current. Um, and that is a giveaway that we have some inductive impedance. So recall for an inductor, the voltage across it is the inductance times the derivative of the current. So we can kind of see that the max voltage occurs at the maximum slope of the current. Uh, also, if we observe a relationship like this, where the current peak occurs before the voltage peak, we say that the current leads the voltage. Uh, you could also say the voltage lags the current. Here, we could say the current lags the voltage. Um, when we talk about power factor later, you can see that we usually refer to the current. So this would be a lagging power factor. This would be a leading power factor, but we'll get to that later. Uh, here, another giveaway equation for capacitors is that the current through a capacitor is a capacitance times the derivative of the voltage. So we see here the maximum current is at the maximum slope of the voltage. Um, so now if we kind of look at what we have set up here on the bench, um, we have a circuit like this, where we have some input voltage, we have some resistor, 10K, and then we're gonna swap out the impedance and see how the phase reacts on the scope. Here at the Rigol 1054Z. So let's start out with, here is two resistors in series. So we're probing just the source and then the voltage across Z. Um, and since we know that this one resistor is constant, gonna always be a resistor, if we look at uh, the voltage across this resistor, which is just the source minus the voltage across the load, uh, then we know that we also have the current because the current has to be in phase with this voltage. So if we use the math function on the scope to just subtract channel one from channel two, where channel one is this voltage, channel two is this voltage, we'll have the voltage across this resistor, which means we know kind of how the current is behaving. Uh, here, with two resistors in series, we see that, as we expect, uh, since the net impedance in the circuit is resistive, the, uh, there's no phase lead or lag with the current. So here's the current. You can see if we go to math, math, and position this up more, the peaks more or less line up. Nice. So now, Instead of having that resistor as the load, let's change that to the capacitor. And we can see this dark blue is still the current in the circuit. Now, if we line this up again, 
we'll see that the current is actually leading the voltage across the load. And that means we have a situation like this, where the current peak is occurring before the voltage, which means our Z must be capacitive. So this Z right here has to be capacitive. And in fact, it is. There's our blue capacitor right there. Now, finally, here's just an inductor here as well. We see that the voltage, the light blue of the load, leads the current. And that's exactly what we expected from this guy here.